Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubois Jr. and I was born July 4th, 1986. Today I'm going to talk about dogs in a way that I got to say thank you up front. Thank you for being here and trying to learn some more about some dogs. But today, I don't really want to talk about the dog side of it. I want to talk more about the human side of it. I see so many dog training videos and all this stuff out here and no one's talking about like what we as a person can do to, to be better with our dog. It's always like get the dog to this and get the dog to that and make the dog this and make the dog that. What, what about with us? Because in reality, if we can say fix ourselves to get some better habits, our dogs would just naturally come along with that. Something that I want to talk about today is something that you know, I did this, I ran this awesome marathon today and I'm hurting, but it got me thinking and it got me thinking to the point that I had to stop thinking because the thinking was messing, messing everything up. It'll get you tired. It'll get you stressed. It'll get you to overcomplicate things. But just to stop thinking allowed me to be able to do something that was just, I, I still don't know how I'm able to do what I do and seeing the other people around me. That I can see when someone's thinking too much because you can watch that things are just getting problematic for them. As opposed to just, when, when you're when you running that long, you're you running. You, you, you gotta just stay, not even, you're not thinking. You're just, you're just zoned in doing what you're doing. And, and thinking about that made me have to really say something today about what it is that I have really come to see and notice that is like really, really nice with a lot of, a lot of animal trainers. Not so much as even just only dog trainers. But when I see someone that's able to work with, with any animal really, really good, they have something about them that is just, in, in reality, to, to the, 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 the untrained eye, is very, very, very unique, very special. Very special in a way that they do not have a said talent in reality of like knowing how to work the dog the best and the greatest and all that, but they have something about them that I think a lot of us just skip up on. And that one thing is calmness. They're calm. I rarely see a dog trainer that's doing, it's excelling at what they're doing. Any, any of the sports stuff, any of the pet stuff, any, 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 anything. These people, these girls and these guys are so relaxed. They're so calm. They're so patient. They just have this calmness to them that that's what attracts the dogs to you. And that's something that I think a lot of us should really think more about and, and stop thinking about what that next like training technique is and start to worry more about how do I calm my own self down? Because the calmness is what attracts dogs, animals, all animals. I mean, it attracts my skittish cows, it attracts my skittish goats, my, my donkey, it, it attracts animals like crazy when you're calm, when you're relaxed. And, and, and there's something about this that the animals can sense it when you're faking it. And, and to a human being, you can fake it. But to an animal, it's, I'm gonna almost say it's an impossible thing to do. The animals can see what the heck's going on. The animals can see trickery and manipulation going on. But the animals really just start to get close to us when they see a true, genuine, just compassionate, relaxed, calm person. They just, they wanna do everything in their power to stay close to them. And it's something that I just continuously keep on seeing. I would just tell more people to just look at this when you're seeing these trainers that are doing what looks like just absolute phenomenal work that they, they are so relaxed. And there's something that a horse trainer told me once that I just never forget. And it's changed everything that I do when I work with, with dogs. We we're trying to load this horse into a trailer. And a horse has been in a trailer once in its life in a very forceful way. They had to drug it, threw it in there, brought it to his new property and let it out. Oh, Johnny, get that, all done. And, and let it out. So it, it's, it's had a horrible, terrible experience with going inside of a, a, a trailer. So same thing as a dog, having a horrible experience going inside of a crate. But this horse trainer looked at this horse, and, and of course all of us as spectators are standing there looking like, he's is he going to get it in there? Because this is, this is challenging. The horse is just is fighting a fool. But he said something that is incredible. I'm not trying to get the horse in the trailer. And it's like, well, aren't you trying to get him in there? He said, no, I'm not trying to get him in there. If he goes in, he goes in. If he doesn't, he doesn't. And we'll try again tomorrow. And there's something about that language that just really gets the animals to just, just bond to us like crazy. Because that horse got in that trailer that day because he didn't ex de demand it in a way, but he demanded it in a way of being able to let them know that you don't have to do it right now. It's, it's, it's okay if you don't. And a lot of times we need to look at what we're doing with our dogs in that sense. That we're trying to like, you better do it because I said do it. We, you better get on it because I said get on it. And especially when you're trying to teach them something new. You know, for me to sit here and tell this boy down at this point because he's got this wine, I want to go this and I want to go that. You know, he knows what I'm looking for. But if I'm trying to teach him down, I do not want to have the high expectations on you better do this and you got it good and you got to figure it out right now. I got 10 minutes, man, because it's dinner time and then I, I, I need to eat and, and you better make it happen. Just if he doesn't do it, he doesn't do it. Let's try again later. It's that calmness that patience, that dogs just, they, they, they have no choice. And especially dogs, especially horses, and especially cows. I mean, I'm, even chickens, my goodness. The more relaxed you are, the more that I could just sit out here as I was just earlier and just hang out. And I'm just sitting there, just, just not even thinking, just, just sitting there. And then the chickens all just come up and I can pet them at that moment. 
But as soon as I get up and I'm talking like this and I'm moving around, they're just trying to, they're just, they're just, they're just sporadic, man. they just out to run away. They're, they're out to get out. But when you just relax, they want to listen to everything that you have to say. And I'm going to say that that's, I think, the, the majority of the things that we should be working on if you're having issues with your dogs is worry about trying to get yourself to figure out how to be able to get yourself into a calm state. And I'm not saying by doing no drugs, doing no alcohol, doing no pills, doing no none of that. More of the natural ways are able to be able to get you there, such as exercise is one fantastic way I've come to realize, and, and, and just having a good eating habits and, and just, just having better habits throughout your day to making sure that you're not, you're not scrambling. So if you're scrambling in the morning trying to get to work, maybe you need to get up a little earlier so that you can have a more calm presence to you so your dog doesn't see you in this sporadic, chaotic looking way before you head out of the door and you leave them behind. And then wondering why my dog is so anxious and it's, it's breaking out of crates and it's chewing up the whole household because you just left it in a very, very high, just in reality, the toxic way. The toxic manner you left that dog, ah, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta get this, I gotta brush my teeth, I gotta get my clothes and I gotta get out the door. Your dog's like, what the heck's going on? So a lot of the things that we can get to have better with our dogs inside of our household is just us taking those extra steps to have better habits to be able to calm ourselves down. And it, it, it's going to be a sacrifice up front if you're not used to it. You got to get up at, man, I'm unfortunate for some of y'all. I got to get up four or five, six o'clock in the morning. You know, I, I, don't, I had to do that today. <laughs> That's just not my style of living. You know, I'm good with seven, eight o'clock and I know I should do better than that, but my goodness. But uh, if you got to get up at six, you might have to get up at 5.30. To, to be able to just sit down and relax for a moment. Allow your dog to see you in that calm state and then get everything you need to get ready and then go off and do what you gotta do. When you come home, don't come home on just, oh, I gotta just, just, just come home and just chill and just relax and just, just, just look around and just be in the presence of looking at like, wow, this is amazing. I have this house. I have, I have this dog. I have these children. I have this husband. I have this wife. I have this life. I have this amazing opportunity to be able to be here right now to be able to just experience what I'm experiencing and just enjoy it and sit in it and just sit back and just say, wow, this is absolutely incredible. More of doing that is what I'm going to tell you, <laughs> going to get your dog to want to get closer and closer. Stop being less anxious. Stop being less pushy. Stop being less demanding and just looking at you as just that safety net, that sense of safety that's going to be able to guide them. Because when you're calm, you're thinking things rationally through. You're, you're seeing your dog do something that you don't like, and you do not just flip a switch and just go into rage mode. You think it through. You're like, man, he just he chewed up, he chewed this up today when I got home. You know, I, I, I run into this sometimes. I come home and and, and 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 not if there's just him, but if him and another dog out there, they kill a chicken. I don't know why the chicken's gonna go in this whole property, but they love to go. Oh, get down. They love to go inside of his dedicated area that's all fenced in. Or right, get down. And, and, and when they go in there, he, for the most part, leaves them alone. But sometimes a chicken doesn't make it. So I come home and I look at that. And I'm just like, that's unfortunate. You know, I, I just have to take ownership myself. Uh, get down, man. Get down. I have to take ownership myself and just say, yeah, I messed that up. I messed that up. And not come in in a, in a, in a, in a oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. But if I was coming home and, and, and already in this, I got to move, got to get stuff done fast and this and this and this, you're going to be quick to just go into this, this, this frustrated stance. As opposed to being calm. You come home and you're calm. You're going to look at that and you're going to assess it. You're going to say, man, that's unfortunate. But you know what? It's, for one, not the end of the world. For two, it, it, mistakes, stuff happens. And even if it was happening every single day, the more energy that you put in it, that's more likely why they're still doing it. And I ran into that situation myself personally with seeing him kill because he know he's not, suppo he, not supposed to. Behind my back, when there's a chicken in his area, it's the roosters because I allow him to chase the roosters. He don't really chase the hens. So when a rooster breaks in his area, he knows that's free game to chase. So when he would do it, I would get in a hissy fit about it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And then he would do it the next day and then do it the next day. When I finally just came home and I just looked at it and said, you know what? That's, that's, uh, that's dog food for someone else, unfortunately. It just is what it is out here. And, and I just let it go. He stopped doing it. He doesn't even care to do it anymore. I can go out there and there could be eight of them running around in there. I don't know why. They like to go into his area. But there could be eight of them in there. And he just looks at them and he just lays down and doesn't care. Because I started to get calm and started to just let, that, let it go. Let it go. Because when you're calm and you let it go, you're going to think it through. You're going to be able to process it. I'm telling you, you'll be able to process things much, much better, much easier, in a much just, just simpler way, as opposed to just being in this frantic mode. I know we got stuff to do, but a lot of stuff that we do is pointless, straight up. If you just like took your day minute by minute, 
literally minute by minute and saw all the things that are going on in your day, you would look at majority of that as being meaningless, absolutely meaningless. And you're doing it thinking that you have to like fill space as opposed to just hanging out and just relaxing and just chill and just being here, being here right now. And a lot of that is what is going to be able to create a way, way, way better relationship with your animals because they're going to want to get closer to that. They're going to know that you're not going to get frustrated. You're not going to tell them no. You're not going to be pushy. You're not going to give them attitude. You're going to be more kind to them. You're going to be more patient with them. You're going to be more willing to be able to understand their needs and be able to meet their needs because you're going to cut something out that you realize you're doing that you don't need to do. You're going to be able to put more time over here. It's something that a lot of us should do. I've done this many times in my life that I'm probably going to sit here and do it again is do that minute by minute. Literally, I'm not talking hours. People got 15 hours. No, do minute by minute. It's 8.02. What are you doing? It's 12.14. What are you doing? So that you can see what it is that you do not need to do anymore. So that you can move that time somewhere else that's going to be more valuable to you. That's going to be able to bring more to you. That's going to be able to do something absolutely amazing for you. And, and there's just so much about this dog training stuff that no one's talking about this aspect of dog training. That us as humans need to make sure that we're ready to even work with the dogs. You know, a lot of people out here talking about all oh, this COVID dog and this COVID stuff and these dogs are crazy. You know, how anxiety ridden have we been as a human species this past few years, several years at this moment? Because we're just, oh, I can't go to work. I got laid off. Oh, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Hearing about all your friends and this and this. Hearing about all this chaos and death and wars and everything going on. It, it, it's getting inside of you. And when it's inside of you, you, you're no longer calm. When you're not calm, your dogs are also going to start to get into that jittery mode. They're just jittery. They're just like, oh, 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 oh my goodness. But for the people, I, 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 I'm testing challenges all the time. For the people that are not into all of that, their dogs are chill because they're not, they're not in that energy of like, I watch the news all day. I watch this all the time. I'm getting all this and I'm feeding it into all this all the time. You just, the dogs are relaxed because the human being is relaxed. That's one thing that I, I see from trainer after trainer after trainer. I don't care what animal species it is. The ones that are just good. I see some people do stuff that people would say like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense how he was able to get that dog to get that way that fast. Some people say that about me, and I'm just like, it's not me, man. It's a calmness that God has been able to give me is what I can say. Because I haven't always been this way. And, and I used to do a lot of negative things to try to force myself to be calm. But the dogs were able to sniff that out and see that through me, see the fakeness. Where I'm trying to, trying to portray something that I wasn't being. But then I just, I just chilled. I just calmed down. I just sat and I just said, you know what? This life, I'm here right now. And something changed to be able to allow me to be able to just be in the presence of where the dogs are. So we were able to meet and match and be able to be together. That's why I know, I know pretty much for a fact that every time when I do speak to my dogs, we're in tune. We're in tune with what's going on. I mean, this dude is so in tune with me. He is just paying attention to everything that's going on with me. Sometimes it's a good thing, but sometimes it's a bad thing. But when it's a bad thing, I still am in tune with him to tell him that's not what I'm looking for. I want you to stop that. Just calm down yourself right now because we're not going into that right this moment. Because I, I got this dog as a puppy when I was in that, in that rage mode, man. Just, just go, 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 go. I'm not doing nothing. Anything fast. And that's why he acts like this when I start to get, get, get moving. Because he's like, we're going to go do something. We're going to go do something. We're going to make something happen. We're going to make something happen. I'm just like, no, we're not going to do nothing. So I have to slow down and, and say, hey, Oreo, get down. Slow down. And just to, to speak to him and to communicate to him in a way that he understands. And that's what's going on, especially you got these high energy dogs. Especially you got all these farm dogs. These, they, they're, they're, so, they're so in tuned with people. That's why a majority of these dogs, you do not need to worry about leashes and collars and this and this. Because when you are calm, that dog is going to listen to your words. It's going to be able to very clearly see what the heck is going on and what you're looking for from them. That's why I never trained this dog with a leash. Because he listens to the words that I'm saying because we're just, we're just paired together. He's like, oh, okay, well, that's what's up. So my German Shepherd is, he just listens to my voice. He listens when I speak a word. I could just speak a random word, and he's like, what's up, man? And I'm like, no, we good. And then he's like, okay, and he just heads on off. And they start to become in tune with us because we start to calm down. But when you're frantic, your dog is also frantic. When you're just, I got to do all this stuff and, and make everything happen, and you'll say to me, oh, no, Mark, I don't have enough time. You know, I got to get home. I got to cook dinner. I got to clean this. I got to go do this. I got to do this. And I'm going to guarantee you that all of that that you're doing there's something in there that is meaningless, absolutely meaningless, something that you can cut out that you can find hours back, not even just a couple of minutes, but hours that you're doing that is slowing, hindering you and not giving you the lifestyle that you're actually looking for. The lifestyle that we are all in, uh, in reality kind of looking for is to be able to have more relaxation, more peace, more joy, more freedom. That's what pretty much anybody on the planet is going to say that they're looking for. But we're doing all this stuff that's actually forcing us to get away from that. We're getting further away from any sort of peace because we're just so spread. We're just so frantic. 
doing things that we need not to do. And there's something about being able to, uh, Johnny, come here. Uh, Johnny, get down. There's, I know you want to eat that food. You, yesterday was your fast day. You'll be all right. I'll give you all chicken tonight. And uh, there's something about being able to just, just chill out and being able to be calm is what's able to just, me, to be able to speak to him like that. He's just like, oh, okay, I understand. With no hostility going on, with no pressure of me having to have this and have that and do this and this kind of collar, this kind of system and this kind of, no, it's just we're in tune. Now, you're looking to have some sport and go out and do some competitions and stuff. You know, things are different. But as far as just having a dog that you want to be able to go everywhere with and be able to hang out with and be able to just do as much as you possibly can with, a lot of us are putting way too much into it. Too much to the point that the dogs are, that's where the confusion is happening. Because we're doing too much as opposed to just hanging out and just relaxing and being calm and asking and telling. Because the main thing I'm still going to say is you want to tell the dogs what it is that we're looking for. The dogs are begging and demanding that from us. They're not just this passive thing. They're always pushing us. They're always challenging us. That's just what a dog is. And we need to really just some people need to get that in your brain and understand that. Dogs are pushy. Dogs push our buttons. Dogs will push every little rule that we put. If I say sit or down right here, he's like, well, what about a fraction of an inch right there then? And, and if you don't get on that fraction of an inch at first, he's going to take another inch and another inch and another, and then he's going to keep on going. And that's where I'm going to say that for majority of what we're looking for, this is where the treats and all the stuff starts to complicate things. Because with the dogs being pushy, the dog's going to push you for more of that. And you're never going to, not never, but you're just not going to get out of it. You're going to have to constantly keep on going through these battles all the time over and over. Now I said get off the couch and the dog jumps up in there and like, hey, hey, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? And you come out and bring out 15 hot dogs and, 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 and throw them at the dog and tell the dog to get off the couch. What's the first thing a dog is going to want to do again instantly is get back on that couch. And he's going to want to continue to keep doing that because that's, that's what dogs are, man. They're just, they're pushy. They're, 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 they're always, 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 always doing that because that's what animals are all about. Not all, but dogs in specific are all about that. My chickens are that way. They're like, hey, man, where the food at? <laughs> where the food at? That's all they look at me for. That's why these guys are still standing there because I didn't give them food last night. And they're going to still stand there looking at me like, where the food at? Every time I come out here, they're like, where's that snack at? You better give me them snacks. And I'm like, I got you. Just give me a moment. I I'll hook you up, man. And that's just what they're always doing is just pushing, pushing, pushing for all that. Or get down. Pushing, pushing, pushing for that. And this is a simple concept right here, right now with this dog in specific. They just, they, 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 they'll do what you're looking for, but they're like, well, what, what, what about, what, 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 what is, and the only way to be able to get yourself to be able to, in reality, get through this is to be calm. Because if you're frustrated, every time that he gets up, I, I would just be getting more and more and more and more and more crazy. More psychotic looking to the dog, to the dog in reality. Because he's like, dude, what the heck's going on here? I'm laying here and I just moved over there. Like, what's the big deal? And I'm like, it's not a big deal. But since you're already so high up on the, on the frustration level, Every little thing that they mess up on, you're going to have a freak out about. And or you're going to just, the one way, there's like two options here in reality. One, you just ignore them. And he's like, oh, what the heck, man, you're not paying attention to me. Or you, you go and you start to add too much. You're adding too much to the dog. And that's where someone would say, oh, what about these four quadrants and all this stuff? The four quadrants have more to do with you sitting on your couch and living in your living room and telling your dog what you're looking for. When you're, when you're just telling that dog to get off of you because you're frustrated, you're, you're, you're doing negative punishment at that moment. It's something that not a lot of people are talking about, the, the, the whole simple concepts of what this stuff is. And sitting there giving them pets, that doesn't mean that you're positively reinforcing that dog in that moment. That dog may not be wanting that in that moment. And that's something that we should be really, really thinking more about. Instead of thinking it's only with treats and it's only with leash pressure. It's with everything that we're doing. Everything that's going on out here. Everything that's happening. I'm forcing these dogs to do something right now that they don't want to do, but I'm telling them to do it. And I'm not giving them an option to do it. And that's why we're going to be good together. And, and if they mess up, it's not for me to just go crazy and go wild. And oh, I said sit and I sat down and grabbed the leash and do this crazy stuff. Because I tried this stuff. And I was failing and failing and failing. And you go back and watch my videos from years ago. And you can hear me in my language talking to these dogs over and over and over. And trying to go and get them and get them and get them, do this and do this. And, and I was just getting frustrated. I was getting frustrated over and over. And it didn't get it any better. The moment that I just, was just it's all good, man. Like, I know he's going to mess up. I know he is. It's a guaranteed fact that he's going to mess up. But it's for me to be able to remain calm, to be able to address that situation that he's messing up with and be able to say to him, this is what I'm looking for, and for us to not have any sort of hostility with each other. 
Because that's what I had with him, especially that dog when I first got him. Hostility because of the training methods I was using with him. I said no, and I put that prong on him, and I'll give him a snap with that leash. We had hostility going on without me being able to realize that it's, <laughs> this is going to sound messed up, but this is just how I look. Pet dogs, y'all. Competition stuff, it's different. But I don't need them to be perfect and pristine. If I want to do this quick 10-second looking obedience routine, cool, we got to work on that, make it fun, make it exciting. But I don't expect them to be perfect. And that's something that I think a lot of people get confused with is that perfection side of things. Don't expect them to be perfect. No, they're going to mess up. And, and when they mess up, that's when you being calm is going to be able to address that mess up without building hostility, but watching it keep getting better and better every single day. Every single day. I didn't just start coming out here and just tell him, put him in a downstay and it just happened. No, it's every single day. I came at him fair and I said, hey, I don't want you there. I want you over here. And I came at him in a kind way, not trying to be too pushy, not trying to be too mean. Not I, I give him a little attitude sometimes, but that's still me having a little extra frustration that I need to still get rid of. And I'm not going to be perfect with that. I'm working on that to be able to be in a better place. And that's the main thing that I see when I see animal trainers. They are so chill. They're just standing there holding a the dog on a leash and they're just hanging out. The dog can be flipping out and you're, they're just standing there like, whatever, man, we're, we're going to get through this. The dog, they're trying to get the dog to sit and they're just sitting there. They're just calm. They're just, we're going to get there. It's going to happen. And not having that huge high expectation on you better do it right this second. It's like, it's okay if they don't, man. We're going to get to it. We're going to get there. And, the, and keep working on you. Keep working on it. Keep working on it. And you're going to get there. And when you're calm and you're working on it, the dog is going to love you like crazy. And love may not be a correct word right there, but they'll at least respect you. They'll respect you and want to listen to you and want to take your guidance and not give you so much. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this camera. We'll figure something out here. But uh, they're not going to give you so much pushback. The, do you want to get the pushback to be a little less and a little less and a little less and a little bit better and a little bit better? But I'm saying they're always going to be pushy, uh, Oreo. They're always going to be having that little bit of pushiness to them. They're always going to have that little bit of, is this okay and can I do this and, and is it all right stuff behind them. And it's for us to remain calm, to continuously keep on guiding them. And then you have that dog that you don't need to worry so much about. It's, it, we don't have too much to, to care about here. Because a lot of times we're, 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 we're demanding so much that the dogs are, are, are not even caring about and caring for. And we as humans are like, I, I want you to do this because I've seen it on some, some show or some this or some that or some Instagram or some Facebook or some, some YouTube. And, and you better do this because this is what this person said that you need to be able to do. As opposed to just like hanging out with your dog and being calm and patient and being compassionate with your dog and relaxing with your dog. And showing your dog how to be a kind uh, animal on this planet. And, and a lot of times that just takes for us to be that leader up front of showing them what calmness looks like. Because that's what you want your dog to look like, right? So you have to be that leader to show them what calmness looks like. You want to be that leader to show them what discipline looks like. We're going to do this and we're going to do it. And I said, do it and we're going to get it done. You're going to show them. You're going to be that leader to guide them to show them that. But you have to be about it first. You want your dog to be so calm, but yet you're, you're just enraged. You're, you're having a mismatch of communication going on here. And the main thing you need to work on first is getting you, the human being, calm. And then the dog will calmly come with you. The dog will look at you and say, I could deal with this. And that's something that, for whatever reason, dog training stuff just isn't talking about this. They're talking about the right technique and this and this. And that's why a lot of people, you got to go to more and more and more and more pressure. More and more pressure. Using treats, using collars, using equipment, using tools, using all the stuff. More and more pressure. Because you're, you're trying to force something that you're not. You're trying to force something that, that you don't even care to even understand who, who you are. And you're trying to force it, saying, you better be calm, even though I'm crazy and I'm, I'm anxiety ridden and I'm, I'm wild and I'm, I'm out here and I'm paranoid and I'm all this, but you better be calm. And it's like, that doesn't make sense. And I want to say that aloud for more people to be able to just really understand that. That again, a lot of what I talk about is not the, this, you're right on it, you're good to go. A lot of this is the stuff that we need to work on. The stuff that we have no choice but to work on to be able to make sure that our dogs are going to be able to be what it is that we're actually looking for. And stop thinking that you just, you just don't need to do nothing to you and it's all on the dog. No, you want to put majority of the work on you yourself so that the dog is simple. Because I'm telling you, they're simple. They're so simple. They're so easy. Dogs are so easy when you're calm, when you're just, everything's all right, man. And again, not because you're on any drugs, any pills, any alcohol, any, any of that. The dogs don't like that. They, they give you pushback with that. They, don't, they know the fakeness. 
They can see if you drank too much today and try to act like you're fun and try to act like you're cool. The dogs always look suspicious. I see this over and over. They look at you suspicious, like what, what's going on here? What's happening? Because they can see the fakeness. You wanna be real. You wanna be as real as absolute possible. And that's something for me that outside, and I pre greatly appreciate some of y'all that go back and watch my old stuff that I talk about. Because the old stuff I talk about is how you're gonna be able to find that calmness. How are you gonna be able to find that peace? How are you gonna be able to find that way to be able to get away from these things to try to make you be in this fake stance so that you actually can get into a better situation with your dogs? I'm telling you, that's the fastest way to have a nice dog is to get yourself to be calm and do whatever you need to to figure out how to be able to get to that way. And it's more likely because you're, for one, do a minute by minute guideline of what you're doing each day and realize you're doing stuff that you don't need to do. And when you start cutting stuff out and you start finding more time, you're gonna to start to appreciate life much, much more because you're gonna realize you have more time to actually get things done as opposed to thinking that you're in that situation that I don't have enough and I just, I'm working, I'm a slave and I can't this and I'm my kids this and this and this and I don't have no time. You're gonna realize you do have time. You're gonna find it. And when you find it, you're gonna use that time right there to start to work on making things better for you. And then you'll only notice that you'll find more and more and more and more of that time throughout your day. You'll start to cut out the things that you realize just don't matter. It's something that I, I, I just challenge everybody, do a minute by minute uh, schedule on yourself to see what you're doing, to see what you can stop, see what you can get away from. See that when I say to wake up a half hour earlier, you'll find extra time at night so you don't have to go to bed so late, so that you can actually go to bed at a decent time, so that you can still be able to get all the sleep that you need. You'll, you'll be able to find it everywhere within your day. There's no way that any human being is out here 24 seven and you got everything, everything is productive to, a, to make your life to be what it is that you're looking for. That, that's, that's, that's a lie, that's a lie. We have a lot of time each day, a lot of time. We just misuse it. And that misuse of that time is what's causing us to be so anxious and so frantic and so paranoid and so worried and so all these words that are away from being calm. And, and I'm just saying, just, just find that calmness. And I'm telling you, you're gonna watch how everything wants to start to come close to you. Some people walk this planet and animals just come to them. And they just, they, because the animal can see that. They can see like, wow, this person is on my level because the dogs are calm. Even though they're jumping and looking and going crazy, they're calm animals. They're, they're super chill. And the only reason that they get all hyper and all excited is because they're, they're matching us for one. And or some of these dogs have work to do and they need that to be able to do their work. But as far as them being able to listen to us, they should listen to us in a calm stance, not in a frantic stance. They don't work. They do just, they do not work good when you're frantic. They do not work good that way. They work amazing when you could say, hey man, let's do a couple of do, sit stuff today, you know? Let's just set it up, let's just do this. And you give them chance after chance after chance. And then they finally start to get it. And they see that you're happy about that. And they see that you're not trying to force it anymore. You see that everything is looking better with it. And then the dog's gonna say, I can trust this leader because this leader is coming at me in a way that matches my energy. And, and again, I, I, there's this stuff going on here. Or we're looking at dogs that have high energy as if they are anxious or something. No, they're getting that anxiousness because of us as humans. And if you get calm, I'm, I'm, I've done this over and over and over again. I take someone's anxious dog and I bring it to me and I bring it around me and it's no longer that anymore. And, and it's all about who, who we are as people. And the more we work on being calm, the faster we're going to start to see success with our dogs in our homes. Thank you. Man, I'm broke down today. <laughs>